What's up, y'all? How are we doing? Thanks for checking out the video. This is a overview and trip report of our latest kayak fishing adventure with Georgia Kayak Fishing down in Fort Pickens, Florida. In this video, I'm going to give you a bit of a report of how our trip went, as well as some tips and tricks on how to fish this area. Fort Pickens is a historic U.S. military fort built in 1834. It used to guard the Pensacola Harbor. It is now part of the Gulf Islands National Seashore and is administered by the National Park Service. So if you want to book a campsite on Fort Pickens, you have to go to the nps.gov website and book from there. So just to show you the lay of the land, the campsites are right here, kind of in the middle of the island and off the beach. The fort and the pier are on the back side of the island. The pier has been a great place to fish, great place to catch bait. As you travel from the gate to the fort, there are about three or four good parking lots that offer easy loading and unloading and easy water access. When kayak fishing Fort Pickens, I typically avoid the pass. Um, there's a lot of tide, a lot of current coming in through this area, and this is a highway for boats coming in and out of Pensacola Harbor. So when fishing offshore, I kind of use the pass as a marker, and I always try to stay east of the pass and far out of any current or any tide that might be there or, you know, the boats that are zipping in and out of Pensacola Harbor. So on this trip, I'm paddling the Jackson Kayak Big Tuna. This is a great kayak for offshore kayak fishing. It's big, it's stable, it's got a bait tank, and it's comfortable. It does look funny on my little Jeep Renegade, though. So the fishing game plan for GKF is we designated a parking area, got up before dawn to launch our kayaks, and a few of us would set up an easy up so we have shade to come back to later on in the afternoon. So this trip took place June 9th and 10th, 2017. The conditions were very nice. Um, they were a lot like what you see here in the video. Uh, at some points in the day, the surf got, I don't know, three foot-ish. Nothing really bigger than that. It was choppy offshore, and the highest winds we had to deal with were probably in the 15, 17 miles per hour. It wasn't perfect, but uh, it was still fishable weather, and when you get those windows, you got to take them. All right, so rigging on the big tuna here. Um, I'm still on that kick about minimizing the gear that I take with me. I only want to bring the equipment that I'm going to use. Uh, no sonar, no GPS. Um, I've got four rods with me, two conventional rods that I'm using for trolling setups. I have a heavy spinning rod, and then I have a lighter spinning rod that I'm using as a sabiki rig or a bait rig. So the rod rack you see I made a couple years ago, it's made out of PVC piping, it's a DIY thing. And I wanted a rod rack that kind of held the rods up a little higher, shoulder height. That way when I turn around and grab a rod, it's right there. Also, I wanted something that I could use for trolling. So, as you can see, there's a nice spread between the four rod holders and the two on the outside angle in opposite directions. Uh, that gives me a good 15 to 16 feet space between rod tip to rod tip on two outside rods. And uh, this helps me keep lines straight, not get tangled up if I'm trolling multiple lines, one down line, one free line um, at the same time. So in this clip, I'm sabiki rig fishing for bait. There's a whole bunch of different stuff out there. Um, the typical favorite is cigar minnows. Uh, those are the same ones you can get frozen at just about any bait shop. Um, you know, you can also catch them live on a sabiki rig. Sometimes it's easy to catch bait. They're just jumping in the boat on a sabiki rig, and sometimes they're a little finicky. Um, but when you can get a few live baits in the water, and you do have a bait tank to put them in, uh, it really increases your chances of catching up with some good fish. But it's always a good idea to bring a small box of frozen cigar minnows just to fall back on. Here we got baits in the water, strike indicators on. So the Spanish Macs were on fire this weekend. Everybody caught them. 
Uh, there were better than 20 people showed out for GKF that fished, and uh, just about everybody caught multiple Spanish mackerel. So this is one of those disaster clips. Um, I've got a decent sized Spanish mackerel on. I set my sabiki rod down with the sabiki in the water, forgot it was there. He got tangled up in the sabiki line. Had to cut that line, clear the sabiki, unhook the Spanish mackerel, and fish. my reel uh, got destroyed in the process. I don't know what's going on with the reel. This is a Pen Defiance 20 level wine. I've only had it for a year. Uh, it's been a good reel. I have caught some kings and some sharks and some pretty good sized fish on it. But uh, it seems it couldn't take the Spanish mackerel this weekend. The Spanish were just too too strong. So I guess I'm going to have to take it apart see if I can't fix it. If not, uh, send it back in. But uh, I'll let you guys know how that turns out. That's the hooks, bro. So we were all kind of fishing on a line, and uh, I noticed Brian Sanford's boat take off in the opposite direction as he goes on a sleigh ride, and uh, and and I hear his reel screaming from this king. So um, I reeled in my line and uh, paddled over to get some video of Brian's nice king mackerel. 